I'm Chris Tuck, a financial advisor, CFP, with a passion for educating my clients about investing. My father-in-law, Scott Kleiman, founded the practice, and together with my wife, Lindsay, and amazing staff, we are making a place to feel more at home with investing. This is Advisors in Cars Getting Coffee. Today, we're picking up Alan Hark, one of our CPA partners. We're going to have a conversation about investing in taxes in a 1971 powder blue Buick Skylark. And just like Alan, it's another product of the 70s. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Good. How are you? We're good. We're good. Come on in. Hello. This is tight. <laughs> you okay back there? Oh, there's plenty of space back there. How you doing? Wow. How you doing? Good Look seeing at this you. car. You like the car? Beautiful. Wow. wow. Our friend John, 71. Buick Skylark. This Baby is blue outside, really amazing. Powder blue, white interior. I have not been in one like this in this? well a long, long time. It's a throwback, isn't it, Alan? It is. It is a throwback. You had a car like this, right? I had a car. I had a '74 powder blue Cutlass. You guys powder ready for blue. some bagels and some coffee? I am always ready. Yeah, for is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're gonna yeah. go to a bagel bagel barrel. Back in the '70s, they used to put the they used to put the babies in the middle. All right. Yeah, Scott, you could have sat right here. <laughs> we could have got it <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> oh, right in the look middle. at this, front row. Wow. Right in front of the Beautiful. bagel store. Wow. That is perfect. That should do it. Thank you. So, Alan, thanks for coming out today. Thanks uh, for having me. I thought it'd be really good for us to talk about kind of where our two worlds collide, right? So from sure. a tax side and investment side with a lot of clients together, and so much of what we do, or what you do, is, is interrelated. Right. So I thought it'd be really interesting to get your perspective. Uh, maybe we could start with the biggest challenge that you're seeing clients face today. We have a lot of folks that, whether they're working for a big corporation, they're involved in a 401k savings, we always encourage that. Um, we want folks to get their matches. Mm -hmm. If they're self-employed, small businesses, we are always looking at SEP IRAs, simples, um, ways for them to, to get into a retirement plan. Uh, I think that people stop short there, and what happens is they say, you know, I'm putting money in way for retirement, but they're really not concentrating on an open investment account. Right. They're really not focusing on net worth outside of retirement. So you get to a point now where we're starting to see a lot of folks that are retiring, sure. uh, starting to retire, have retired already, and you know they're they're in a situation where they really have a one-dimensional thing. They have one thing that to pull from, and that's retirement. So they got this heavy concentration sitting in one spot of deferred taxes. We love the deferred tax, sure. um, but that's that's a big problem. Hmm. Yeah, so, you know, when we think about it, um, from an investment standpoint, we look at diversification, right? So we want to be well diversified in a portfolio and own different asset classes. It's kind of like t a tax diversification you're talking about, having right. different areas to pull out of, right? Yeah, so the one thing that, that folks uh, have to really understand is that they're putting money away their entire working life, and that's at a specific type of, you know, whatever rate it is at that time, what the tax laws bear or what their, their earnings are. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's lower. But keep in mind that a lot of these individuals be at a very high tax bracket when they, when they retire. So even though they're putting money away, they're really, you know, and, and deferring money, taxes, they may pay more taxes on the way out. I will. Sure. For people who don't know, when they do go retire, how are things taxed differently? So the taxation of any type of deferred plan comes out as ordinary income. So when you think about it, uh, most people will have uh, Social Security, they may have another uh, pension source, they'll have investment income, they may even have a part-time job that they're working. Um, and then this, this IRA money uh, or 401k money will come right out on top of that at the ordinary income tax rate. And keep in mind that if they have an open account, Chris, they have the opportunity to take in uh, they can take advantage of some of the, the, the rates that are out there today that are very positive on, or on qualified dividends at 15%, capital gains at sometimes at zero but up to 20%, very low rates comparison to today under the new tax law where you have a 37% max rate. Right. You know, it's interesting that you, know, that you make the distinction between different accounts. Right. Because Chris, as you know, in the, in the practice, uh, we try to get people to have accounts that are in different buckets. We sure. call. So we have either a, an IRA bucket, whether it's a SEP, a simple, a 401k, some kind of bucket, or, or end, we have people have a, a non-retirement account or what we call an open account, and we want to fund 
all those different sources. So I think that's a smart way to look at things. You, you hit the nail right on the head. So what we like to see um, in, ta in planning from a taxation standpoint when people are starting to retire is what are the buckets, what are the facts and circumstances around each year? And it, would be, it gives you optionality. It gives you the availability to say, hey, you know what? Um, the, the market reacted one way we should do this in one year or vice versa. We should take money out of retirement in another year. Or if you work part-time one year, it may have to come out of, out of a different bucket. But we can maximize your tax advantage when you have options. Right. If everything's in deferred accounts, you don't have options. Right. Yeah, and having options in retirement is, is critical. Crit absolutely critical. You know, one of the, the other areas, you know, while we're, we're talking about it, uh, that we get a lot of questions on is a Roth IRA. Right. Right. So Roth IRAs, you know, we get a lot of questions of how, how do those fit into the mix, right? So they're kind of like a third bucket. Um, and, you know, what are, what are you seeing as far as, you know, clients utilizing Roths? Yeah, so they, they seem to be um, a, a little bit misunderstood by a lot of people. We see a lot of individuals, there, there's limitations on, um, income limitations on when you can and cannot put money into a Roth IRA. What we try to do is encourage the younger generation before you're making up to that maximum amount of, of the income limit that's going to cut you off from being able right. to make Roths to put money in. You're in a low tax bracket, so you're really not getting an advantage of a of a tax deferred vehicle as much as you know a, a, a lifetime of, of Roth IRA deferral. Not deferral. That's a different tax free money. Right. Right. Big difference. Uh, you know, again, this Roth conversation is important and. Chris and I are always faced with this question from a client or clients, and that's, well, should I invest in a Roth IRA or should I invest in a traditional IRA? Which one is going to have the best impact from a return standpoint when you take taxes into account? And it's a, it's a difficult mathematical question to answer. It, it is, and that's why you keep getting the question. Um, so sometimes there's, a, there's no real easy answer. It's facts and circumstances. And they can change from year to year. So, um, you know, we, we, it's not an all or nothing thing. It's not zero into one or 100% you know, into another. It's something that, that can blend that makes sense from the taxation standpoint for that given year. Right. So, um, if you have, and, and the same thing with, um, with 401k objectivity as far as looking at, you know, you have, you have 401k options that are. Roth components and non-Roth components, same thing. Right. And what options, because there are income limits for Roths, what options do people who might be over those income limits uh, have if they want to use a Roth? Yeah, so there's, they're very limited, and we get um, we get a lot of folks that will say, can I use a Roth, and the answer is no. However, what people fail to realize is that inside their employer's 401k, there's a Roth option. Right. So that they can defer their amount that goes in into a Roth IRA component. And you know, a lot of people will say, yeah, but I have to pay tax on that today. And that's right. true, yeah. but they're not looking into the future of what happens you know, down the road with that. So there's, there's an option for that. Yeah, and I always find it really interesting. A lot of people don't realize this, but if they choose to do the Roth component in their 401k or 403b, whatever it might be, their, their, their corporate or company plan, if they get a match on that, the company's match still goes into the pre-tax bucket. So correct. they're still getting money going into both buckets if they're getting a match. That's correct. The match will always and has right. to go into the, yeah. the pre-tax. You know, one thing that I see when it comes to Roths is um, that a lot of times when we do the math and we try and figure out if it's going to be a benefit, sometimes the benefit is, is very long term, that it might even be for the next generation that a Roth really starts to make sense. Do you agree with that? I totally agree with that. Now, you know, depending on the net worth, right. some people may never utilize their full 401k or, or their IRAs. And in that case, not only is, is, is there tax-free buildup in that Roth during their lifetime, it's for the next beneficiary. One more beneficiary gets to enjoy decades of tax-free buildup in that money. Can't beat that. No. Can't, what? can't beat tax, non-taxes. What's wrong with never paying taxes again? Nothing at all. And yeah. it's really one of the only areas that you can do it in. Do you think that it's possible, we get this question a lot, that the government might be able to repeal Ross or make them taxable at some point? So in most cases, when, when there is a major change like that, there's usually a grandfather provision that the IRS will say that any money that's in the Roth will be, remain grandfathered and receive the same treatment, but Roths are cut off as of a specific date. Sure, so, and there's been no indication that that might happen, but no. anything could happen, right? Now, Roths have been around for quite a long yeah. time. All right. Well, I think 
we've got a lot accomplished in a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we should get the bill. You think they included tax on it? I don't know. I, I think probably. You'll do the math for us? I'll did. do the math. <laughs> All right. Nice car. Thanks. You think I should get one? <laughs> hey, nice magazine. What edition is that? November. Ah, that's a good one. 